And on what would have been her 11th birthday, we will show you our three-part special report series that includes a look back to 2015 when the incident took place and an exclusive interview with the Doolin parents three years after the death of their daughter, Gabby. 13 News at 10 starts now. From WBKO, your hometown news leader, this is 13 News at 10. Three years ago today, the community of Scottsville changed forever after a seven-year-old was found raped and murdered. Tonight on 13 News, we take a look back at the life of Gabby Doolin, the criminal case, and her family search for answers. On November 14th, 2015, the woods behind the ball fields at Allen County Scottsville High were filled with police lights as the body of a little girl was found in the creek less than 30 minutes after she was reported missing by her parents. Investigations that you know, just everybody is going to be uh, uh, diligent on trying to do the most they can to, to help solve it and nobody wants to go home on a call like this until something can be found out. Shock. Definitely shock. He, um, it, for something to happen to a seven-year-old girl, just very difficult to understand. So, uh, I mean, that's it. That's, I think everybody's in shock. The next night, the small community of Sconsville came together to remember Gabby Doolin and to mourn with her family. We just want to help. You don't know how to help but to pray, so that's what everybody's done today. In the days that followed, the community waited for an arrest. The sheriff increased security at the schools until a suspect was in custody, and pink ribbons were hung around town in Gabby's memory. Putting up ribbons for Gabby. Um, her favorite color was pink. Her teacher, Miss Rector, told us that, so we're just trying to put up ribbons for awareness. Hopefully they'll find who done this soon. If you don't want to go outside, you don't want to go anywhere, you know, just kind of keep your kids close to you. Gabby loved attention. She loved balloons. She loved parties. She loved everything that represented being happy. And she would have been smiling, that big, beautiful smile, because that was for her. Her beautiful smile was remembered as people lined the streets to support the Doolin family as they laid their little girl to rest. People want to do something, no matter what little thing it is. Bows, ribbons, chevrons. A day after Gabby's funeral and six days after her death, police arrested 38-year-old Timothy Madden and charged him with murder, rape, sodomy, and kidnapping in Gabby's death. Knowing there was an arrest, the community of Scottsville said they could rest a little easier. I feel that hopefully the Doolin family can get some peace knowing that they are proceeding with this case and the rest of the community can also get some rest as well. Now coming up tonight at 6 and 10, we continue our coverage with an in-depth look into the search for justice. At 6 o'clock, Sean Bowdy looks at Timothy Madden's time in court from his arrest almost three years ago to what's happening today. Then tonight at 10, we'll hear from the Doolin family three years later. All we have heard is about the criminal that we sit in the courtroom with. Every time we go in there, all we hear is about his constitutional rights. And Gabby's not really had a voice. You know, we, we've tried voice. to do, you know, our small part to give her a voice. But in that courtroom, she doesn't have a voice. You can see Dalton's full interview with the Doolin family tonight on 13 News at 10. Three years since the death of seven-year-old Gabby Doolin, Timothy Madden is charged with her murder. On this, the third anniversary of her death, we take a look at the case against Madden and why there have still been no convictions. Sean Bowdy has the story. Three years, three trial dates, and there's nothing definitive that says there won't be a fourth. As much as one year from now seems like a long time, it's not. The fact of the matter is that a case of this uh, importance has to be done correctly and doing things correctly takes time. In a case where both the defense and the prosecution has changed perhaps time, is the only one at fault. This court intends to do everything in its power to make sure that we get it right the first time. Because if we don't, 
we're going to be back. And we're going to be back again. And we're going to be back again. Commonwealth Attorney Clint Willis was voted out of office in the most recent election. Allen County voting for someone else to take over. The case of Timothy Madden likely on their minds. They were upset at the defendant. They were upset at the defense attorney. They were upset at the second defense attorney. They were upset at the judge. I've been ready for three years, but none of them were on the ballot. And it was a matter of they were rightfully frustrated, but somebody had to take the hit. It just happened to be my family and my staff. This wasn't Willis's first big case, having been in office for almost two decades, and he's seen how long these cases can take. Generically, on a sex-type case, you have a situation, any type of sex crime, where defendants will not come in and say they're guilty. If their mom is sitting in the room, they will never say, I did this. The lame duck prosecutor sounding off on the case that has consumed three years of work. Everybody wants just a soundbite answer. They want you to fix their problems. They want it done and they want an explanation in 10 seconds. I'm in a situation where the Commonwealth attorney does not set trial dates. The Commonwealth attorney does not schedule trial dates. The Commonwealth attorney does not continue trial dates. Corey Morgan will be taking over as Commonwealth attorney and doesn't see any reason the trial won't happen in September of 2019 as it's supposed to. At this point, I don't expect there to be any sort of continuance unless, unless there's something unforeseen. It's been three years. In three more years, will Timothy Madden's case still be going on? Much like the rest of the case, only time will tell. I'm Sean Bowdy, 13 News. The public defender for Timothy Madden did not respond to our request for comment on this story. It would have been the 11th birthday of Scottsville's Gabby Doolin. And we are continuing to look back and remember Gabby's life and the impact that she had on her community. I had the opportunity to sit down with Gabby's parents in an exclusive interview as they reflected on an extremely difficult past three years. You know, the old saying, time heals all wounds. I don't believe that, not when it comes to losing a child. Time cannot bring back a life that was taken far too soon. That beautiful little blonde-haired girl was full of life, and her life was cut short. It's been three years since Brian and Amy Doolin lost their pride and joy. Gabby. It's just the, the constant thought of missing her, and she was always happy-go-lucky, you know, and always smiling. And I don't know, most of the time it's just, it, it, well, you miss the way things were, you know. Kidnapped, raped, and murdered 1,096 days ago. Three years have passed, trial dates have been pushed back, and delays have continued to come. All of that in 1,096 days, but still, no justice for Gabby. I never, I never knew, you know, that our justice system was so slow turning, you know, I just had no clue. And so every time that we've been hit with, it's gonna be longer. It's just, you know, you're just like, wow, really? Why? The man accused of raping and murdering her, Timothy Madden, pleaded not guilty to the crimes and faces the death penalty. Several times in the case, the defense has requested more time to prepare for trial. This case has not been delayed in any way, shape, or form. Madden's defense attorney, Travis Locke, even being dismissed in May, pushing the trial back once again, leaving the Doolins devastated. Well, as soon as that happened, I mean, there again, you know, common sense has played in. You know it's going to be put off again because the new guy has to have time to do whatever Travis Locke's been doing for the last two and a half years. All we have heard is about the criminal that we sit in the courtroom with. Every time we go in there, all we hear is about his constitutional rights. And Gabby's not really had a voice. You know, we, we've tried voice. to do, you know, our small part to give her a voice. But in that courtroom, she doesn't have a voice. With the new trial date set for September of 2019, there looks to be some hope that it could finally happen if everything continues down the right path. But even in a case that demands justice, time still stands in the way. Whenever she says the trial's starting, that's when I'll believe it. Uh, until then, you know, you never know. Three years of pain, agony, and suffering through a parent's worst nightmare, Brian and Amy still know that no court and no time can take away from their daughter's legacy. What do you want her legacy to be? 
she had a smile that would light up room and um, she just, you know, she was full of life. Absolutely full of life. Why would someone take this innocent soul? We don't know the answer to that question. And though time will run its course through due process, justice for Gabby will come in due time. Her presence made not only our lives, but so many other people's lives better.